of the school, a chaplain's kind of like a local pastor at your parish, um, I'm kind of like the local pastor um, of saints. And I keep one foot in the classroom. I, I'm currently teaching one senior religion class as well, which I really uh, enjoy. And this is my fourth year uh, here at Saints. Uh, let's begin our evening together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and loving God, we thank you for bringing us together this evening as we share what it is that makes this such a spirit-filled uh, place uh, in honor of our patron, St. Augustine. Uh, we ask that we may be able to uh, present our school uh, in truth, and we ask that uh, the questions and answers which may be asked may be guided by your spirit so that true understanding uh, may be attained by all. We ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. And St. Augustine, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, Father Max. Just to kind of get us started, I know that we're going to be um, joined probably by a few more people here shortly. Um, but just to kind of give you a, a little idea, I'm sure many of you guys uh, have seen my name and are familiar with my name. I'm the one that's sending you emails and, uh, and and guiding you through the process. I'm Paul Sipper, the Director of Admissions here at Saints, entering my second year as the Director of Admissions and uh, year 16 here at Saints. Um, done a lot of different things on campus. I've coached a lot of sports and been involved in ASB. Uh, as well as um, as well as also uh, speak, been a, a speaker at a couple of retreats as well. So lots of different hats. Those of us that are in Catholic education, we always wear lots of hats. So um, with the, with that being said, I want to cover just very very briefly uh, um, sort of the process of, of of what you need to know from an application standpoint. Um, our application is available online. I noticed that uh, most of the people that were um, received the contact from an email from me. Um, have either filled out an inquiry or have already completed the application. The application is available. It's online, sahs.org. And of course, you can navigate by clicking admissions and uh, lots of different options on that page, lots of different uh, links to various information. And a lot of your questions can probably be answered right there. Um, and just with a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of searching. So not too much there. Uh, we are, in fact, and this is a big question that we'll probably mention repeatedly through all four of these meetings, but we are offering uh, and, and requiring the high school placement test this year. The high school placement test is a very important aspect of our placement uh, into our classes at, at Saints. Um, we have a, a very rich track record of using the data and, um, and being able to identify um, the strengths and weaknesses of our applicants. Uh, and it's, it is one aspect of the admissions process, but it's really used mostly from our side to be able to help uh, delineate the courses and the classes that our students uh, will take their freshman year. So it's really important for us. It's also used for, um, for scholarship purposes. We have our principal scholarship, which I'll mention as well, uh, but our principal scholarship award winners, uh, we have the top 10 high school placement test uh, takers, scores, uh, will receive a, a principal scholarship. And we're very pleased to announce that um, the, the dollar amount this year has gone up and we're, now our principal scholarships uh, are $10,000 per year uh, for the four years that you're here at Saint. So excited about that. Uh, very briefly again, um, the requirements, what we're looking at, this is a holistic, it's a kind of a big word, but a holistic uh, view of admissions, which means uh, it's not one aspect of, of grades or a test score that's going to get you into the school. Uh, it's going to be a, a holistic view of who you are um, as, as an individual. So if you're a, a student right now listening to our approach, um, that should be kind of uh, important to you guys because literally it's not just if you got uh, you know straight A's, we wanna know who you are and, and the type of person and individual you are. So you'll see a lot of the, the aspects that you see on the, on the screen right now um, begin to tell a story. So we require grades from seventh and eighth grade. Uh, that's a pretty key uh, component for us. Um, but we also know that, that seventh and eighth grade grades aren't just about A's and B's. Obviously we love all A's, but uh, sometimes um, A's and B's can, can, can also tell a story and, and grades in general can tell a story. Perhaps the seventh grade year might be C's and B's and by the end of the seventh grade year, it's more B's than C's and then eighth grade year, it starts to show up a few more A's. And what that's really revealing is that you're maturing and making a, a pretty big step towards your academic progress. So seventh and eighth grade report cards are required as are uh, recommendations from your principal, your English teacher and math teacher. And uh, essentially, a, a lot of the questions that I've received already by email involve those questions uh, about what should be included. And it, honestly, it's really pretty easy. 
when it becomes time after January 1st, there'll be a link and you're just gonna type in the appropriate email addresses and the system itself contacts the appropriate person, the, the name that you put in, uh, and they just go through and fill out a, a very simple form. Uh, you can also add um, individual recommendations as well from coaches or Boy Scout leaders or your, your parish priests. That, that, that's also kind of supportive as well, but not mandatory. The, the principal English and math teachers are, are really what we're looking for. And if, uh, again, if you're an applicant right now, what might be important that you're, you're thinking about with those recommendations uh, is we get to hear a, lot, a little bit about who you are. We get to hear words like, he's a grinder. He works really hard. He's a great friend. He's a great leader. So uh, it reveals a lot about your character, um, not just necessarily the fact that you got all A's or all A's and B's. Um, it really tells the story, of, begins to tell the story of who you are by the people that you've worked closest with. Uh, over usually over the last couple of years, especially if you're at a Catholic school. Uh, and then in February, we interview everyone that applies. Last year, we interviewed about 260 applicants. Um, you'll sign up for a, a day in a slot and you'll interview, you'll sit down with one person. It's a one-on-one -on -one interview. Usually lasts about five minutes and we get to find out a little bit more about you and make sure that you're a good fit for us and that we're a good fit for you. Um, and then the, luckily then in, in, in March, you'll hear, you'll get a letter from us and it'll be a, hopefully some good news for you. And you'll get a, the packet and, and we'll hopefully see it uh, mid-March uh, at our, our new family night. And that's uh, something we didn't get to have last year because of COVID. And it's uh, something that we're, uh, we're excited, hopefully to be able to get back at some point in the near future. So um, that's just kind of a very brief admissions uh, overview. Um, I know that there's gonna be some questions on that, but I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna start this meeting off without you guys at least having uh, a basic idea of, of the pathway to admissions here. It starts with the application online. Uh, and then there's a checklist that you'll be assigned and a few hoops to jump through, pretty easy stuff, mostly involves uh, typing in your, uh, some email addresses um, that, that are sort of timely after January 1st, uh, and then scheduling yourself an interview as well. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, I noticed a few other people have joined us, but uh, without further ado, I wanna pass uh, my time over uh, to our, our first presenter tonight, and that's our assistant principal for academics. Uh, Mr. Greg Hecht, and he does a fantastic job here at Saints. Uh, he's the person that's going to be responsible for uh, kind of overseeing the entire academic program, and uh, very pleased to be able to introduce him. I'm going to stop my share and allow him to share his screen, uh, and then right. uh, you'll hear a little bit about him, and if uh, questions come up, uh, feel free to use the chat. Um, the chat system will be able to, several of us will be able to reply to you, um, and uh, at the end of this, we'll have a little short Q&A before we go into Mrs. Cratchy's presentation. Fantastic. Welcome, everybody. Uh, as Mr. Sipper said, my name is Mr. Hector, Greg Hecht, and I'm the assistant principal for academics here at Saints. I've uh, been here now going on uh, 14 years, uh, and so I've seen quite a bit in, in my time. I've been at two other uh, parochial high school settings um, in administrative capacities. I'm also the uh, volleyball coach here at Saints, so if there's any volleyball players out there, be glad to talk to you on that presentation here down the road, but really I want to spend the next 10 to 15 minutes uh, kind of going over a 30,000 foot view of our academic program here at Saints, touching on some of the highlights and then hopefully leaving enough time at the end, because if you're like me, when I go to a presentation such as this and we've, everybody has their own unique individual questions, and if I don't touch on those, I want to make sure that I've allocated enough time uh, to get those questions answered for you. So if there's something that I don't touch on, uh, by all means, do put it in the chat and we'll do our best to get those answers to you. I don't want anybody walking away feeling like they didn't get their questions answered. And if for some odd reason the evening gets away and you don't get your question answered for whatever reason, please feel free to reach out to me at any time uh, by way of email or uh, phone contact. I'm happy to spend time with you on the phone, happy to chat with you via email, whatever works for you. So that way you can walk away feeling like you got all the questions answered um, and don't feel like you've left, we left anything on the table for you. So hopefully everybody at this point can, uh, can see my screen and uh, I'll give that, if there's anybody who can't just let me know, but hopefully everyone can see that. Um, and I really start this because I think it's really important for parents, families and students in particular the students to know this. Obviously, being an Augustinian Catholic high school, um, and for me personally in academics, I'm kind of guided in, in my, uh, my vision for academics and, and the outcomes for our students um, by this saying from St. Augustine, which is love and do what you will. 
Uh, and as I tell the young men when they come here, that really centers in and around a passion and an enthusiasm for learning. And we don't expect everybody to be perfect, I think, in this world. And oftentimes with the stress of school and having to get in and having to have grades and taking tests, I think we place a lot of stress on our, on our, on our young people these days. And I really want to kind of shift that conversation to a question about what are you passionate about? What are you excited about? What gets you going in terms of what you want to learn? Uh, and so St. Augustine, this quote from St. Augustine, the do what you will part, have that passion and then pursue that with all your heart and with all your imperfections because we're human and getting the students to kind of know that takes a little bit of the stress off to say, Hey, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to skin your knee. It's okay to maybe fail from time to time because that's how we learn. We don't expect you to know everything when you come in. So this, uh, this quote by St. Augustine, I think is very powerful in that regard, especially when we talk about academics because uh, not everybody's a master at everything. Certainly. Um, so as I just indicated, um, it kind of backs up that, that love and do what you will is kind of backed up by um, those that study psychology and in particular the psychology of young men and Ms. Cratchy is going to talk about that in just a little bit. But for me here and for all of us here at Saints, really this concept of having grit, teaching the young men in all aspects of what they do here at Saints and through their formative years at St. Augustine High School, that perseverance and passion, staying with it not quitting, getting up and trying again and again and again is more often than not the keys to success, not just here at Saints, but in life. Yes, we are preparing our young man for the next step in terms of going in their education uh, post high school, but beyond that really for life. And, and that permeates everything we do and in particular in the classroom. And so that, that sense of that perseverance and passion um, we're going to stress that quite a bit. You're going to hear that a lot uh, from us here at St. Augustine High School because I firmly believe that that is the key to success in all things in life. Um, specifically uh, regarding the academic program here, we are an Augustinian Catholic high school for young men run uh, and operated by the Order of St. Augustine. And we're very fortunate to have the friars, a number of the friars that live on campus in the monastery as part of the original footprint of the campus going back to 1922 when we were here. Um, so we're coming up on our centennial. We're very excited about that. Um, but also in, in that passion embedded in that love and do what you will are those gospel values of unity, truth, and love. And you'll see that that's across our campus, not only on our windows, our doors, but everything that we do. And notice that we say we don't just teach that here, but we live those. And that's really important beyond the walls of St. Augustine High School for life. And that's really, if we can do those things, then I think we've really been successful. We are college prep, a liberal arts curriculum. 100% uh, of our students are college bound. Um, and that takes many roads. And we understand that not everybody, uh, everybody may want to go to Stanford, not everybody goes to Stanford. Uh, so we wanna take that pressure off as well. Uh, our students that leave St. Augustine High School, there is a college out there. I can just share this with you for parents and students to lessen that anxiety about college. There's over 4,500 four-year colleges and universities in this country. And given the nature of what we're experiencing with COVID and what the colleges are experiencing, um, you know, there are silver linings. And down the road, if your son puts in the work, uh, there, there's going to be a great school. And we're interested really here, you're going to hear this a lot as well, in terms of fit fit in terms of the curriculum here, placement, but also postgraduate from St. Augustine High School. What's the right fit so your son can be successful? Can they be happy? Can they be well-adjusted? In those instances when they are, we believe they'll be successful academically and beyond. That's really important. Um, that focus on rigor here, we are a rigorous institution. We do demand much from our students, um, but that does not mean that we compromise the appropriate placement. We have a curriculum here that does allow for a broad range of student aptitudes and abilities to be successful here and navigate the four years here at St. Augustine High School. And we've done that uh, purposefully because we believe that it's important to have a diversity here on campus, a diversity of thought, a diversity of ethnicity, a diversity in all of its forms. And, and that includes academic abilities. Not everybody can be a 4-0. Certainly we have those here beyond 4-0, um, but the full range and everyone adds to that Boulia base here on campus that makes us so special, that community that makes us so special. Um, we do offer um, 27 advanced placement or honors level courses, um, 26 UC approved visual and performing arts classes. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't 
uh, really emphasize how strong our arts programs here are, both the visual and performing arts. And you'll hear a little bit more about um, our new uh, theater and theater and our performing arts center, our music program. It's a strong piece of who we are here at Saints. Um, another piece that we've really, really focused on, I think, over the course of the last five to seven years, and it's paying huge dividends, and we're starting to see uh, that pay off now for us here, um, are, is in our area of sciences, in particular, what you might know, or many people might call the STEM areas. Again, we're liberal arts, so STEM is a piece of what we do here, along with the great works in literature and, and social studies and mathematics. Um, but our lab sciences, 14 of them uh, approved by the University of California, everything from AP physics to AP chemistry, all the way down to the environmental sciences, physical sciences, and most recently, as I'll mention in just a moment, our engineering program to go with our brand new makers lab, uh, robotics programs, and not too, in the not too distant future, our electronics design and gaming programming. And that's, we're very excited about that. You'll also see our UC approved math courses uh, here, 13 of them, again, spanning that uh, spectrum that I talked about in terms of aptitude and ability. So students can navigate that, but we believe these things are very important and centered to our curriculum. We've been very blessed over the years, as you can see there, uh, to have a number of national merit finalists, commended finalists, and even in the past five years, uh, we've had 10 national merit finalists. And so for a school our size and for what we do, it's we exceed uh, those, uh, those uh, expectations, if you will, in terms of base of our, on our numbers uh, consistently year in and year out uh, with our students and their ability to perform at the highest level. Again, I just mentioned, and you'll probably hear more about this if you, you talk to Mr. Sipper or Mr. Horn uh, down the road, as you come to campus. Um, we, we look forward to hosting you on campus in larger groups. I know we have tours available, but along with that programming, we've now been able to match that with the facilities. So uh, the state of the art Raymond uh, Center for the Performing Arts, home to our music and, and drama programs. And on the, the right side of the screen here, as I share this with you, our brand new, we just opened it this year, uh, our Makers Lab. Um, and we've had people come through from college and universities already relatively envious <laughs> of, of the facility we have. So we'll talk a little bit about the programming to match now the, the great facilities that we have. And we're very fortunate to have those here. Uh, and this is, this is part of that uh, advance in science that we talked about. Uh, San Augustine High School this year uh, has negotiated and worked out a partnership with the University of Texas at Austin, uh, the uh, Cockrell School of Engineering um, to enter into an Engineering Your World program, uh, whereby we're offering our Introduction to Engineering classes in partnership with the university. And that allows for a number of great things to happen for our students. Um, first off, uh, they have uh, mentors at the collegiate level, the graduate level there uh, at the University of Texas at Austin that work directly with our students and our instructor, Mr. Freestone. Um, there's a dual enrollment opportunity for a number of students to receive high school credit as well as uh, a dual enrollment credit, which means they can get college credit uh, in advance of them even arriving at college. Um, these, of course, with our partnership now, our engineering classes and our robotics classes are approved. And this is kind of a key distinction um, as laboratory sciences. A number of schools will have engineering and robotics programs and they're great, they're wonderful, um, but not everybody has gone through those steps to get those approved as lab sciences uh, for the University of California. So I, I say it's akin to having kids uh, take these classes, they're fun, they're engaging, and they don't even realize uh, that they're getting, um, it's akin to eating broccoli, right? How do you get your kids to eat broccoli? Put cheese on it. Um, they don't even realize they're getting University of California lab science credit, but they are. And, uh, and I applaud our counseling staff who's worked hard to, to make this happen for us. We're also in conjunction with these programs offering now a computer aided design or CAD certification. So when our students graduate from these programs, uh, they will take with them beyond the walls of St. Augustine High School onto their collegiate careers. They will take with them a CAD certification. And we're very pleased about that. So it's a huge opportunity for us, huge opportunity for the students. And uh, as soon as we can open up our campus doors again and have you all back, we're gonna have you through that and be able to show you exactly some of the great work that they're doing. Um, some additional courses that we've added over the last uh, few years, sociology, creative writing, music technology, our TV, film, and digital media, and they produce, you know, Mr. Osberg's there can talk a little about it too, 
they produce our daily announcements for the kids, the green screens, they're getting real world hands-on experiences with um, TV and media technologies. So that's another wonderful facet uh, of, of this advance in our campus. Um, baseball analytics, uh, that's offered through our intercession program. Mr. Chesser, one of our teachers, is also uh, uh, works with the Major League Baseball uh, organizations to do analytics for baseball. And of course, being an all boys school, a number of our students just love that. So we're excited about that. We also have two uh, University of California approved uh, honors classes, one in jazz band. Um, as we said, we have a very vibrant music program here at Saints. So if you're a musician out there, uh, strongly encourage you to take a look at our music program. We now have an honors jazz band section um, that students can receive college, uh, the, the advanced uh, grade bump for that. Uh, as well as honors yearbook, Mr. Osberg is also our yearbook moderator. And so in our uh, digital media and uh, desktop publishing areas, we've now added a honors yearbook, which will receive UC credit as well. So for advanced editing and design for yearbooks and publications. So we're thrilled about that. And as I mentioned before, coming soon, our game theory and designing uh, electronics, we are keenly aware of where uh, a number of our students have passion and that is in the gaming arts. And so we are uh, working with students to develop that. We actually have an e-gaming club uh, here on campus run by one of our seniors. So it's kind of exciting times for us here for that. And the students really love it. That was a big hit at a rally a couple of years ago. Um, so we're excited about that. Just quickly through the graduation requirements, um, religion, of course, at the heart of who we are, the reason this school exists is Jesus Christ. We don't want to lose sight of that ever. Uh, and so religion is four years. That's a four-year requirement here. I will say it's a bit of a misnomer out there about religion classes in college. And I just want to touch on that really quickly. 90% of our religion department curriculum is approved as university level uh, classes that will count towards college. A lot of people think, oh, I'm taking religion. That doesn't count. Quite the opposite. As a matter of fact, uh, like I said, 90% of our courses do count for college and college admissions. English, mathematics, social studies, science, world languages, PE, the VAPA, visual performing arts. And then we ask that everyone, all freshmen during intercession will take a speech class. We think that's a, a key piece as part of a healthy liberal arts program is to learn how to communicate uh, with others in a way, not only the written word, but the spoken word. We think that's very important. So that is a graduation requirement as well. Some of the great academic extracurriculars we offer here at San Diego High School. Um, academically, we participate in San Diego Academic League and Quiz Bowl, Model United Nations. Um, of course, we have our school newspaper, The Augustinian. Um, our Society of Saints Scholars is a wonderful program uh, where we bring in speakers, prominent individuals from various fields to speak to students um, on a monthly basis or quarterly basis, depending on the year. Um, and that's a wonderful program that's taken hold here. Of course, we're participating in National Honor Society as well as the California Scholarship Federation. We have peer tutoring here that students can get involved with, uh, as well as mock trial. So if you're coming to St. Augustine High School, your freshman year, you transition to high school, and this is kind of a generic, if you'll look, uh, kind of gives you a, a broad sense of what a student might take here as a freshman. Uh, of course, you mentioned, I mentioned the religion, the specific classes, you take one each semester, a different class each semester in religion. That one does change per semester, but you would take faith survey, church sacraments, all students will take that. Um, English, you'll either be in 1A or honors, and I'll talk about placement a little bit, how you might get into some of these classes here in just a little bit. Mathematics, generally algebra, geometry, pre-algebra. I understand this is a bit of a hot button issue in terms of placement in mathematics. Uh, we'll talk about that here just down the road because you probably have questions about how do I get into geometry if I'm interested or so on and so forth. We'll talk about that. PE is a two-year requirement for the state of California, just so you're aware. So every freshman will take PE, regardless of whether they play a sport or not, they'll take P PE. Um, world language, we ask that students take two years of a language in their non-native tongue. So if you happen to be a native Spanish speaker, we ask that you choose French or Latin. Um, placement is done there as well, and I'll, I'll mention that as well. World history, a number of our freshmen might take world history. These are the additional courses that you might change. Maybe you start at freshman year, maybe you start at sophomore year, because you have to have six classes in a day. And then the visual performing arts, a number of our freshmen will choose to start their visual performing arts, get that requirement out of the way. We do have uh, computers. And then the science I mentioned, biology, a number of students who uh, achieve a certain benchmark on the HSBT can begin in biology, or they may choose physical science. 
both of which as I are used to approved lab sciences. They'll meet not only the high school graduation requirement, but satisfy their collegiate requirement for lab sciences. <clears throat> This is, of course, one of the highlights of uh, us on the academic side, as well as an institutional side, I have to say, uh, is the intercession. It's a January term between two semesters, between our fall and spring semester. And for four weeks in January, um, students can uh, choose um, interest-based courses. And as I mentioned, freshmen, all freshmen take speech, so that's kind of uh, baked in for them freshman year, but their sophomore, junior, and senior year, they can opt to take uh, a ho from a host of approximately 25 different uh, course offerings. And so anything as you see listed there from marine biology um, to film studies, to career and sports, um, to uh, Christian service trips to Italy, to Guatemala. And so it, it's been a remarkable program for us. Again, it's, it's a big, uh, big point of interest for the students and they look forward to it. Most of our seniors, by the time they get to senior year, and they've been through this three years and back to back, they've had they've taken a number of classes. Many of them opt to do internships. We have placements at over 100 different sites in San Diego County and beyond. Um, and last year, we placed almost almost our entire senior class in an internship, um, and that's been wildly successful for us. A very very exciting pre-professional programs for a number of our students. Um, and they get a four week kind of immersion in some of these areas, everything from uh, law enforcement to medicine, um, sciences uh, to business. So it's been a remarkable program. A lot of students look forward to that. Shepherding program is also a, a kind of a, a great starter program for us here at San Augustine High School. I mean starter because oftentimes a shepherd program deals with those students such uh, as, it, as yourself maybe, who's an eighth grader transitioning to high school. But if there are issues that you might have in terms of that transition to high school, where you might need additional help with organization or note taking or listening skills or test prep, we do offer a shepherding program, which is where you'll meet with a shepherd, a mentor, Mr. Johnson here on campus once a week to kind of help you ease into that transition of high school life. So you don't get overwhelmed. You learn how to manage the school day, how to manage your homework, how to manage the assignments and then kind of slowly transition out of that program, either into the second semester freshman year or into the sophomore year. And it's been very successful for us here, very successful for our parents and students um, who maybe have struggled a little bit in their seventh and eighth grade year with some of these issues here. Um, and we found the shepherding program to be very helpful for a number of students. They will receive a support team action plan that provides weekly updates to parents and students as to how students are progressing. It also helps uh, monitor kind of coursework that goes on, accountability for homework, things of that nature. Um, so many of you might be interested in the, in the Shepherd program. So students with learning challenges, we do have a number of students that have uh, kind of a, a broad spectrum of learning challenges here. To be very uh, upfront, we do not have a learning center or resource specialist on campus. Phil philosophically, we believe in, in inclusivity. Um, and so we have an inclusive approach to our education. So the students are all together in the classrooms. Um, however, we do work with a number of students who have uh, 504 plans um, or uh, IEP uh, plans that have kind of been, we develop a 504 with that. Um, but we do ask for the documentation to be current um, within two years by the time you apply. And so that in conjunction with our counseling staff, kind of coordinating with our teachers, to uh, address some of those things that maybe if you have an, an IEP or 504, uh, we can do limited accommodations, but most of those have helped the students that have uh, learning challenges be very successful here. So whether it's a lighting or seating adjustment or technology use, we can do all of those things here um, uh, as far as uh, helping those students be successful in the classroom. Again, we have a counseling staff here on campus that is both personal and academic in nature. So uh, they'll, those counselors will meet with every student twice a semester uh, to check in, see how things are going. And that doesn't mean that's the only time. Students can certainly walk in, make an appointment call, do more than that, but they're guaranteed at least two times in a semester to meet with a counselor here. And that's every year as they're here at San Augustine High School as they progress uh, through their four years here. Um, so we certainly work in concert with all the teachers, counseling staff. It's a very tight knit campus in that regard to make sure that students are successful and get the help they need if they're struggling. And you heard Mr. Sipper talk about it here. So I certainly don't want to belabor what we're talking about. The entrance process here, I want to remind you of that. It is available to you online um, now. And the HSPT, I just kind of wanted to highlight a little bit 
uh, in terms of uh, what is actually covered on the HSPT. I know there's some people that don't know exactly or they've never experienced uh, this kind of test before, um, but it's got a verbal quantitative reading math and language sections that are broken to approximately 18 to 25 minutes apiece. We also on that day, in terms of our placement, we'll have a, a math supplement that will go on in addition to that. And this is kind of what I want to close on so you understand why, it, you know, we talked to, we opened this presentation with the concept of passion and perseverance and grit and determination um, and, and being excited to learn, right? Being excited. It's, it's always, a, I would say it's always a great day to be a Saintsman. Every day is a holiday here at Saints. Every day is a holiday. Um, but <clears throat> all that being said, we really do stress making sure we have the students correctly placed as Mr. Sipper talked about. That is so important. Whether that student needs to be challenged and moved into a certain class or things need to be slowed down so they can be successful. If we're rushing people through for the sake of, let's say, keeping up with the Joneses or we have concerns that so-and-so might be, quote, left behind, that's really a disservice to the student if they're not grasping the material. And it only, as you know, scaffolds as you go up builds on itself. So by the time we get to senior year, if we're rushing somebody through who's really not prepared, that's only to their detriment when they graduate and go on to college. So we really emphasize here, we want to get the correct placement. So we have a number of things that we do here uh, to make sure that that happens. And in particular with math, we use the HSPT as, as a general guidepost, but also then the supplement I just referenced here. So we have a 25 question, 30 minute supplement that will be that will take place on that testing day. We'll get those results. We'll then also get, of course, grades and recommendations from teachers. But then in May, we have an algebra proficiency test, which we ask students that want a challenge to get into a higher level math. If we place a student, let's say in algebra, and they really wanted to be because they say, I took algebra in eighth grade. Maybe the initial testing doesn't show that. So we, we recommend algebra to get that mastery down before you go on to algebra two, which is then of course the basis for calculus and those things. Then we offer a challenge test in May. And if there is a proficient, they meet a benchmark of 85% or higher, we will let them move on into the geometry. And the same thing for algebra two trig or so on and so forth. But we really wanna get that placement correct. The same holds true with English and world languages. Why? Because we want your student to be successful here. So just as people learn at different paces with different subjects, we acknowledge that and we wanna honor that. We don't wanna do a square peg in a round hole and then we can't get out of it because we get to the end of the semester and all of a sudden students are struggling and I can't undo that at that point. So we really work hard on that. We wanna emphasize that to both the parents and students. Happy to dialogue about that too, of course, as things move forward. So at this point, um, I think I ran, maybe hopefully didn't run too long. I apologize, but I appreciate all uh, for listening and your patience. And um, if there are any questions, I'm certainly open to answering those. I'm trying to monitor the chat and looking at different things here to make sure like instruments on a panel of an airplane, making sure that uh, I'm, I'm addressing everybody's concerns. But if anybody has any questions or concerns, I'm happy to entertain them at this time. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Greg. I appreciate your, your time as well. Just sure. um, the way that uh, the, the, this little short Q&A session can work is there's two, two things you can do. Um, number one, you can, you can raise your hand like uh, we do in our classrooms and, and we'll work through as, uh, a few questions here. Uh, if you're more comfortable sending a, a direct question to, uh, to any of the, 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 myself or Mr. Horn or Mr. Hecht or, or Mr. Hopped, um, those are, are questions that we can re respond to you as well. Um, yeah. Or if you want to send a, a message through the, the chat in general, we can uh, reply to you as well and answer some of those questions by, by responding. By. Paul, if I might, yep. if I might, um, yeah, the chat would work best for me just because I can't uh, see everybody. So I apologize. I mean, in the square, my little square up. You. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, I, I do you. have a question. I have a question here. If you are placed in Algebra 1, can you take biology? You know, great question. Of course, algebra one and biology, those are separate placement altogether. To be placed into biology, um, you have to have a 95% or higher testing uh, on the local percentile on the HSPT. Uh, do UC labs replace the freshman lab requirement in college? Uh, great question. So when I say UC lab approves uh, classes here at St. Augustine High School, those are to qualify for admissions to be competitive at application for the university. They don't necessarily take away your need to take a lab in, in college. 
That being said, advanced placement classes could provide you that opportunity if you take an AP class and the particular college or university, then you pass it with an adequate score. They may allow you to test out of that. One note of caution there, though, a lot of schools now are requiring students to take their chemistry, I mean colleges now, are requiring students to take their chemistry series or their biology series if they're in those majors regardless. <laughs> um, so just a heads up on that. But yes, some schools will allow you to test out at the AP level. Um, the, the R classes allow the students to be very competitive at, at admission time. Um, one, uh, about how many kids are in a class, the ratio, that's great. We have some uh, classes like the, the, the freshman, sophomore years where you get classes that everyone has to take. You can get classes ranging from 28 to 30. And we do have some classes as low as 10 that are more seminar style as you get older here, get into different sessions like our philosophy classes and things of that nature. So it runs the gamut from that. But we are keenly aware and trying to monitor class size. Right now, due to COVID, it's very small. <laughs> we split our classes in half. So, um, I see. Um, if a student has been in an intensive Spanish program, do you offer anything beyond ninth and 10th grade level? Yeah, our Spanish is not based necessarily on ninth and, and the grade levels. It's based on aptitude. So that would be a Spanish one, two, three, or four. Our Spanish, most of our Spanish uh, on our language programs are offered for the non-native speakers. That's why we encourage a non-native to take another language, like if, if it's Spanish, then take French or Latin. That being said, we have students when they take two years of another language, allow them then to transfer junior, senior year into the advanced placement level of Spanish or French. Hopefully that answers, uh, but we do have things beyond that, yes. Um, Greg, can you can you talk a little bit about our our current uh, our current schedule? Uh, sure, with the COVID situation. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So right now, uh, it's, uh, we are Mondays, we're online on uh, doing the Zoom thing, our teachers go, we have six blocks in a school day. Uh, so we go uh, one through six on Monday. Uh, and then Tuesday through Friday, we're here on campus, um, doing three longer blocks each day. So we have blocks one, three, often referred to as a period, periods and blocks are the same thing. Um, so one, three, five, two, four, six on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Thursday, um, is one, three, five, two, four, six. So the students are going to that same block twice a week, but it's a longer block. And so the classes that have to split, our classes, of course, are spaced out. Everyone's in masks, appropriately addressing the county issues um, that we have a, approximately a hundred minute block. And so halfway through, half the students will be assigned to a designated location outside the classroom and the other students are getting that lesson. And then 50 minutes, 45 minutes in, they switch. Okay. And then the teacher teaches that same lesson again. So it's one, th three blocks in the day. So that's how we do that. And we're basically out at 2.15 now every day. Does that address it, Paul? We also have mass um, freshmen and sophomores. We're doing it on the football field. On Tuesdays, freshmen and sophomores go to the start of school and the juniors and seniors have a little bit of later start. And then on Wednesday that reverses itself and the seniors and juniors go to mass first and the freshmen and sophomores come a little later on Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday, we have baked in office hours. Tutoring hours, can't stress that enough. Um, in the mornings, Thursday and Friday, people, the students can come in for help with their, whatever they're having uh, challenges with or to go to peer tutoring in math. Does that nail it, Paul? We have three messages. Um, yeah, that sounds great. I, I really appreciate that. I'll um, okay. I'll respond to a few of the, the questions that popped up that we didn't get a chance to, to talk to in sure. individually in, in the chat room. I but, will uh, say, we're working on, let me just say real quick, we are working on getting an esports team, the esports club. They're very enthusiastic about that. We did yes, have a we did have a DD club. He graduated, so we're looking for someone to start that again. <laughs> um, and if you pass AP Spanish test in the eighth grade, a very impressive, by the way, that would meet the collegiate requirement, which is awesome. That's fantastic. Congratulations. We would just ask that the student come here to meet our graduation requirement, but they take two years of another language. Being multilingual is a great goal, and that's one of the goals of our world language department. So we'd ask that student to take two years of, even though they've met the collegiate requirement, to take two years of French or two years of Latin. Outstanding. Thank you so much. Uh, great please, questions, uh, guys. Great questions. Like I yeah, said, every day is a holiday. Every day is a holiday, man. Every day is a holiday. If the <laughs> if the questions, if you have questions uh, during the during the this particular time, uh, obviously it's great. Hopefully, um, things will uh, start to clarify themselves. Uh, but I want to uh, get um, Mrs. Cratchy a, a chance sure. to to share her screen and uh, to begin with with her presentation. I, I think one of the most unique questions I get every year. So typically, I visit um, 
35, 36, 37 schools every year as the director of admissions to, to talk about our program. And inevitably, a lot, of, uh, a lot of the questions I get are things like, well, why are you guys all boys? And uh, it's a great one. It's a great question. Uh, but uh, hopefully, um, Mrs. Crouchy right now can share a little bit of our philosophy and a little bit of why we exist in, in the world of, uh, of boys' education and why we consider ourselves uh, a leader in, in boys' education. So, uh, Mrs. Cratchy, all yours. Thank you, Mr. Sipper. I'm gonna share my screen, and while I do that, uh, parents and families, let me just tell you a little bit about myself um, as I find my Google Slides and it loads. Um, sorry, technology is taking its sweet time. Apologies. So I've been at Saints uh, 13 years. I was hired with Mr. Hecht. I like to consider us a pretty all-star class if I do say so mm -hmm. myself. That we were. <laughs> uh, I was originally hired to be campus minister. I moved after having a couple kids, moved into the classroom full-time, and now uh, am department chair of the theology department uh, among a few other things, but all of us on all of us at Saints wear quite a number of hats. So I'm happy to be here. I'm grateful Mr. Sipper asked me to be a part of this presentation, and I'm so eager to share some of I think what I think are best practices uh, with you guys. So at Saints, we have a saying where we accept boys and we graduate men who change the world. We're very aware. Um, which is what I'm going to talk about, that boys simply learn differently, that they, their behavior is different in the classroom, their brains are developing differently, and we're very eager to be part of the process that helps transform them into men in their four years with us, with your help, who ultimately go on to change the world. Um, so I'm just going to speak to a little bit about education, specifically with boys, how they learn, and how we address those differences. So years ago, uh, there's been an, a lot of research going on in single sex education. And years ago, it was becoming really obvious that there were some shortcomings with boys in terms of learning in the classroom, retention, assessment, behavior. And then since that research has kind of come to light, there've been a lot of um, solutions posed. So right now we know that less than 50% of college students are male. We know that boys typically struggle to complete their homework and they tend to be behind in reading comprehension. And back in 2006, Leonard Sachs, uh, a brain researcher, said in today's schools, there's a growing sentiment that boys are simply not achieving to their potential. As a whole, boys' academic achievement has declined, they're taking less rigorous classes, their graduation rates have dropped, and teachers report more discipline problems and less engagement. So now we have to figure out why. And the answer is simply that boys learn differently. Their brains develop differently. Their behavior is different. Um, and so I'm going to speak a little bit to how we address those differences. Um, one of the things that Mr. Hecht alluded to, this is our um, kind of college map. And we produce this every year once our seniors have decided and committed to their next higher education placement. As Mr. Hecht alluded to, 100% of our senior class goes on to college, many of whom, most of whom, go on to a four-year university. Um, we have some who go abroad you know, to international institutions, many who stay in state because we have quite a prestigious list of schools out here in California, obviously, and then a number go across the country. So this is just a sample of the class of 2019 and where they went. But again, I think it's really important that um, to note that Saints is preparing all of our seniors, all of our graduates to be competitive in the college application process. And not only to be competitive in the college application process, but to transition successfully into college. So why do boys learn differently? Um, obviously, traditional school has a predominantly co-educational environment, but Saints clearly doesn't. So what have we identified? What are some of the differences? We know that there's some physical differences. We know parts of the brain develop at a different rate in boys versus girls, not good, not bad, just different. We know their ears develop differently, which actually contributes to how they process sound. We know their eyes develop differently, and we can see that boys track information differently. Uh, by and large, boys tend to be visual learners, so the simple lecture and note-taking of traditional classrooms is not going to set boys up to be successful, and that's what we are here to do at Saints, is to set them up to succeed. We know that a traditional classroom culture 
can vary a little bit, but it tends to lean towards a longer attention span. And I'm sure I don't have to tell parents that teenagers in general don't have long attention spans. Boys specifically tend to start to fidget after 15 to 19 minutes of having to sit still. Girls can manage a little bit longer. Girls can actually sit still for about 42 minutes with the average class uh, length of time being 45 to 50 minutes, you can see how it might be a challenge to boys if you simply are lecturing and taking notes. Boys learn better when they're moving and learning at the same time, we can actually assess that retention and boys are more successful when they can move uh, while they're learning. So we incorporate that in the classroom. We change our activities constantly. I don't think any teacher is doing any one activity for longer than 15 to 20 minutes. Um, you see a lot when you're at Saints, you see a lot of classrooms moving outside, doing activities outside, uh, getting up, moving around the classroom. And even the selection of the material needs to be specific to boys learning. So <clears throat> for us, at least at Saints, it would be unfair to boys to compare boys learning to girls learning and expect them to learn the same. Uh, there simply isn't research to support that they learn the same. And so we tailor everything we do to boys learning. So what do we do? We have a number of approaches that address boys learning specifically. If you're looking at your screen, you see uh, one of our classrooms, we have several that have implemented stability balls because like I said, boys tend to retain information better when they're moving. They get a little fidgety, they need to tinker. So some of our classroom environments include stability balls. We also as a staff undergo professional development on a regular basis that is specific not only to high school education, but to boys high school education and to boys learning. And I'll give some specifics in a second. We believe that we've crafted a boy friendly curriculum. Mr. Hecht alluded to some of the classes um, specifically with engineering, our esports, a number of our intercession classes are geared towards boys learning. Uh, we host on a regular basis experts both on our campus and remotely to educate us on the newest research with boys learning. And we belong to the International Boys School Coalition, which I'll talk about in a second, where they're kind of the leaders in action research on boys learning. And we incorporate um, our families as we attempt to serve our students the best way that we know how. Parents are an integral part of that process by way of feedback and involvement on all the activities that they're able to be involved with. Uh, on campus. And Mr. Sipper has kind of already alluded to our balance that we are not necessarily trying to be um, producing the most number of national merit finalists, although we're always competitive in that world. We want well-rounded students. We want students who feel that they can pursue whatever activity they want and be successful at it. And so that's why we feel like we're well-positioned to help them do that. So quickly, because I definitely want to leave time for questions, in terms of our professional development, we undergo self-evaluation every single year. We evaluate ourselves. We're evaluated by our immediate um, supervisor, which for most of us is, is Mr. Hecht, and then by Mr. Horn. And that's on, on a constant kind of formative basis for us. Uh, we believe that we are always on the front end of research that's kind of guiding boys learning and what's best practices in the classroom so that we can constantly be getting better to serve our students. Um, I've been at Saints for 13 years, and I can tell you that we've redesigned our schedule several times, and the sole purpose of those schedule redesigns has been to serve our students. Most notably, probably years ago, was the introduction to long blocks. Um, we, have mod we usually, pre-COVID, have a modified block schedule to allow for longer labs so that our students can take advantage of some really in-depth lab experiences in the sciences. Um, our, as a whole, our faculty is committed to lifelong learning. Our administration has allocated funds every single year for each of us to undergo professional development. Um, and as a staff, I can tell you that we've read, in the 13 years I've been at Saints, we've read a number of books together uh, and collaborated on what we've gleaned from those books in terms of what we can take back to our classroom. So that's professional development. Quickly on boy-friendly curriculum, um, you've, you've heard a number of our classes already, so I certainly don't want to belabor the point, but we do believe that the list of our classes that we offer not only makes our students competitive for college, but addresses their interests. And obviously, you're going to remember and retain and engage with material that interests you. So we do our absolute best to craft our 
curriculum around boys' interests um, and make sure that we are creating opportunities for them to engage. Um, the way that we structure our day uh, might be a little bit different than a coeducational environment. We have a lot of time to work as a group. We encourage uh, competition. I know I do in my classroom frequently, and it tends to be really successful. Um, and as Mr. Hecht and Mr. Sipper alluded to, we have intercession with a long list of classes. And intercession is a beautiful thing for us because we get to come back to school for the second semester, but start with something that interests all of us, really get to know our students because you only have that one class all day, every day, uh, and build those relationships. And so these, what you're looking at these images are just simply some excerpts from our student produced newspaper with how we are attempting to serve our students the best way we know how. Um, uh, back to collaborating with experts. Um, we have read a number of books and we host a number of experts on our campus to constantly influence how we teach, how we approach our students to make sure that we are always uh, meeting them where they need to be met and addressing those differences that boys experience in their learning process. Um, the International Boys School Coalition in terms of professional organizations is really, like I said, on the front end of action research. Um, what you see is Mr. Eigelman and Mr. Pruder, a number of us on staff have attended, have presented, and completed action research for the IBSC, uh, which hosts an international conference every single year. Um, and so our faculty is committed uh, with our ongoing relationship with IBSC, among others, to always be learning ourselves, engaging in how we can best serve, like I said, our students in the boy-friendly environment. So last thing that I wanna bring up is that you are going to be very much a part of the learning process um, of your son when they attend SAINTS. We have an APA annual lecture series. Topics have included hosting parties, college admissions, boys' education, safe driving, social media responsibility, and a lot more. Um, we invite parents to be a part of a number of activities on campus, so we are constantly pursuing your feedback to hear how we are doing in the classroom, how we're doing on the field, in the theater, how what, what more can we be doing to serve your son. We execute student and parent exit interviews. We get the results of those usually in June every year. And in the classroom, every teacher um, gives their students year-end course feedback surveys. So again, the, the effort to improve is constant. The effort to stay in front of research and how boys learn is constant. Um, and we're committed as a staff to serving our single sex uh, clientele to the best way that we can. Um, and it's a constant ongoing effort to serve them. So with that, I apologize if I went quickly through it, but I did wanna leave a lot of time for questions. Um, I'm assuming there may be some in the chat. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen um, and happily answer questions or throw it back to Mr. Sipper if he uh, has a different venue awesome. wants Thank to you. go to. But <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Cratchier. As I as I said it, you know, this past Sunday would have been our our open house, and it's uh so it, it's actually a really cool day for us. Um, we throw a barbecue, and uh, we get to to showcase a lot of the topics that we have over the next four weeks. Uh, but the the interactivity is the the part that I think um, most of us really really miss here at, at Saints. And uh, last year when we ended up on March 13th when we ended up breaking classes, we didn't we didn't miss any days. We started right away online the following Monday. Uh, but you know what we do is is what we do really well is is relate to our students and of course uh, it was a rough end of the year for a lot of our, our teachers we we didn't sign up to teach online you know we <laughs> we signed up to to be in person uh, and I I'm I'm really proud of of my coworkers uh, for for putting together pretty dynamic online programs but uh, we're just very pleased to be back and being able to uh, to to see the boys and, and work with them we have a couple of boys uh, with us tonight um, Joe Salfani and, and and Mr Alcalay. Uh, who've, who've got to experience a little bit of it. And he's, I see that they've responded to a few of your questions. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, but uh, obviously, um, if you have any questions, we'd be we'd very, very pleased to, uh, to, to, to answer them. While you're thinking of those, um, I do want to mention very, very quickly, um, if you are interested in a tour uh, of our campus, we have some small group tours. You're available. You can reach out to me. I know that there's a lot of people that... Um, have reached out uh, already from here. I've seen a few 
I've seen a few familiar names that I've, I've responded to and a few names that are on the list to uh, respond to tomorrow. Uh, but uh, a lot of the topics that you're, you're, you're going to be uh, you know, witnessing over the next or, or viewing if you have a chance to come and visit again uh, virtually uh, are some of the things that you would have heard from uh, on, on our open house day and uh, probably had a, a, be a better insight and across the board coverage of, of what, we, uh, what we tend to do here at Saints. So uh, upcoming topic next week, we'll have uh, Mr. Horn and Mr. Osberg uh, we'll be talking about the Saints experience uh, in many ways related to um, that mantra that uh, that we said at the beginning. Um, I think you, you've heard Mrs. Cratchy say it. I think uh, you heard Mr. Heck say it, which is the idea of accepting boys and graduating men uh, who are here to change the world. So very excited um, to, to hopefully uh, help you guys through this process uh, and to, to clarify any and any questions. So uh, I'll look for some hands that are raised on the on the screens, but if you want to send a uh, a text through uh, or a message to the chat, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, and again, I appreciate your time and uh, hopefully get a few questions answered and, uh, and clarify a few things. Uh, I, I see a question, are Fridays still half days? Well, um, <laughs> not, not, not right now. <laughs> no. uh, with, uh, with, our current, with our current schedule, it's, uh, it, it, isn't, it isn't conducive to, to, to end our days on Friday like we have traditionally. Uh, and there's no sports or after school activities, um, or I shouldn't say, I mean, there are, uh, but there's no organized sports or, or games, uh, inner, inner school games yet. So uh, our, our, our school right now uh, is uh, ending uh, at 2.15. So that's the, that's the deal right now. All right. Any other questions? Oh, I guess we did a pretty good job, guys. Wow. <laughs> uh, as I said, there's lots more uh, coming up. Um, the, the emails that you guys received um, uh, through our system. And then uh, if, you, if you're if uh, you planning on attending any of the additional uh, meetings, you can use the same exact link and the same exact password uh, to, uh, to join us. Uh, but it looks like uh, that's just about it. Um, I think we got most of our questions, um, and uh, and obviously I'll, I'll I'll hang around for a little bit uh, afterwards. But uh, okay. for those of you that uh, seven thirty one is pretty good, guys. I I, I, saw, I thought it would would take a little bit longer, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, and anyway, thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, I'll hang out here, and if uh, anyone has anything else to to add, um, you know, I'll try to answer those questions as best as possible. Paul, if, do you uh, want us to hang out? Paul, would you like us uh, to hang out? We can. Your, your call, your call, Mr. Heck. I know you got a busy life here. No, I'm happy to hang out. I'm sure there might be some some questions. Happy to do so. Awesome. Thank you so much, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys hopefully uh, next week. Take Sounds care. Sounds good. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Oh, our pleasure. Have a nice. Former Saints men. Oh, I love all right. it. <laughs> Come on back. Thank you. You got it. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you for having oh, us. No worries. No worries. Our pleasure, man. Take Bye. care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Now. Thank you for the presentation also. It was good. You Thank got you it. So Thank much. you. Thank you very much. Former Saints been here as well. Oh, I love it. Mr. Ariza. <laughs> Yes. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Glad to have you back, even Thank if it's you. virtual. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> welcome, welcome home. <laughs> yes, definitely. Hopefully soon in person. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Sounds look good. forward to it. All right. Take, Take it easy. You. Yeah, all right, have a good one. All right. Good job, Paul. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sipper.